I am reviewing New York City Department of Buildings Building Code under Chapter 33, Safeguards During Construction or Demolition. And we have subsection 3303. I'm going to go with 3303.2.3.1, Temp Lighting for Construction Sites. Temporary lighting for construction sites shall use high efficacy lamps with the following minimum efficacies. One, 60 lumens per watt for lamps over 40 watts. Two, 50 lumens per watt for lamps over 15 watts, but less than or equal to 40 watts. Or three, 40 lumens per watt for lamps 15 watts or less. Moving on to 3303.2.5, Removing, relocating, or interrupting services. If any utility is to be removed, relocated, or have its service interrupted, the utility company or city agency affected shall be identified at least 72 hours in advance. Prior to the removal of any service, the utility connection shall be disconnected and capped. Certifications to that effect issued by the representative utility company shall be filed with the department watch persons where in, in this is 3303.3 where an individual building being constructed or demo, demolished has a footprint between 5000 square feet and 40000 square feet a competent watch person shall be on duty at the site during all hours when operations are not in progress from the time when the foundation is poured to when all work has been concluded and the certificate of occupancy or a temporary CFO has been issued where the building has a footprint of more than 40,000 square feet. At least one additional watch person shall be on duty for each additional 40,000 square feet of building footprint or a fraction thereof. And it goes on, the fire department shall possess a valid security card registration with the state of New York, shall hold a valid fire guard certi certificate from the fire department, and for a major building shall have completed the training. And a major building is over 10 stories high with a footprint in excess of 100,000 square feet. That's another section, just adding that. And they got to have a video alarm in place so that you can avoid having all the watch people. Section 3303.4.5.2 Storage near unenclosed perimeters. All material or equipment not being used shall be stored at least 10 feet, measured all along horizontal dimensions for all unenclosed perimeters of the building or structure. And there are some exceptions where if you have the floor is less than a thousand square feet, material or equipment, regardless of weight, may be stored at least five feet from the unenclosed perimeter. And of course, horizontal netting should be provided at a level not more than two stories or 30 feet below the overhanging material. Moving on to 3303.4.7, storage near sidewalks, walkways, and pathways. Material stored adjacent to a sidewalk, walkway, or pathway that remains open to the public shall be not piled higher than three feet, or where a solid fence or barrier is provided to within one feet, one foot, of the top of such fence or barrier. For the purposes of this section, the term adjacent to shall be any area which is within horizontal distance that is equal to or less than the vertical height of the piled material. Exception. Material stored within a dumpster or similar container, provided such material is not piled above the top of such dumpster or container. 3303.5.5.1 Enclosures. Shoot enclosures shall comply with the following requirements. Material shoots that are at an angle of more than 45 degrees 
with the horizontal shall be entirely enclosed in all sides, except for openings at the floor levels for the receiving of material. Such openings shall not exceed 48 inches in height, measured along the wall of the chute, and all openings except for the top opening shall be closed and secured when not in use. Chutes at an angle of less than 45 degrees with the horizontal may be open on the upper side. 3303.5.5.2 Chute Construction and I'm going to skip right down to the highlighted section. Shoots less than 24 inches in maximum dimension shall be constructed of not less than 1 inch wood or 1 eighth inch thick steel. Shoots more than 24 inches in maximum dimensions shall be constructed of not less than 2 inch wood or 3 16th inch steel. Shoots shall be provided with a metal plate in the metal impact plate where material is forced to change direction while falling three a gate shall be provided at the lower end of every chute to control the load of material into trucks and to close the chute at all other times splashboards or baffles shall be erected to prevent materials from rebounding into the street or under the sidewalk shed number four a bumper or curb at least four inches by four inches in section shall be provided at each chute opening where such opening is level with or below the floor or platform. Every space between the chute and that was a fucked up. Every space between the chute and the edge of the opening on the floor or platform shall be solidly planked. Skipping down to the highlighted section, a corrugated sheet having a minimum thickness of 24 gauge through their entire height. Alternatively, chutes shall be constructed of the following non-combustible material. Chutes exceeding 75 length in height. Two, alteration, repair, or partition, partial demolition of buildings where the main use or Dominant occupancy is group I. And now I forgot to say that all that little blurb was in 3303.5.5.3 under fire retardant construction. Now, the next one here, 3303.7.3, smoking. Smoking shall be prohibited at all construction and demolition sites. No smoking signs shall be posted at the site in accordance with the provisions of the New York City Fire Code. Not allowed to smoke on the damn job site, people. You got standpipe action here. Very important, as especially after the Deutsche Bank fire. 3303.8 standpipe systems during construction, alteration, or demolition. During construction, alteration, or demolition operations, standpipe systems shall comply with the following. When, during the course of the construction of a new building, the working deck reaches a height of 75 feet or greater above the ground in a building for which a standpipe shall be required, a permanent or temporary standpipe system meeting the requirements of section 905 shall be kept in a state of readiness at all times for use by firefighting personnel i'm surprised that i do not have that in caps i will fix that standpipe system shall serve all floors where the permanent floors are required per section 3303.11 no standpipe shall be considered to be in a state of readiness unless it is painted red And uh, when uh, the system in whole or part is subject to freezing conditions, it'll be maintained as a dry system. Of course, during demo, standpipe risers shall be capped above the outlet on the floor immediately below the floor being demolished. Scrolling down to the highlighted standpipe hoses, nozzles, and spanners, are not required to be maintained and may be removed at any time. 
during demo operations. All existing house check valves shall remain in place until completion of the demo work. During the construction of a new building, which is an occupiable space at a depth of 75 feet or greater above the level of the ground, and a building for which a standpipe system shall be required, a permanent or temporary standpipe system meeting the section requirements of 905 shall be installed and shall be kept in a state of readiness at all times for firefighting personnel. Well, that's why I didn't highlight up above. The standpipe shall serve all stories below grade and shall be installed as soon as temporary or permanent stairs is installed below grade. No standpipe shall be considered to be in a state of readiness unless it is painted red. And as we mentioned, if it's under freezing conditions, it's supposed to be a dry system. Yeah, that doesn't look like any new info. Roll into 3303.10.2, Inspections of Tenant Protection Plan. The owner shall notify the department in writing at least 72 hours prior to the commencement of any work requiring a tenant protection plan. The department shall conduct an inspection of 5% of such sites within seven days after the commencement of such work to verify compliance with the tenant protection plan. Thereafter, the department shall conduct an inspection upon the receipt of a complaint concerning such work. You got stairs during construction or demo under 3303.11. During construction and demo, stairs shall comply with the following. During the course of construction of a new building or in spaces being added to an existing building, at least one permanent stair shall be brought to within a distance of 40 feet or four floors below the working deck at all times. In all other locations where permanent stairs will be required, a temporary or permanent stair shall be brought within a distance of 40 feet or four floors below the deck at all times. Almost feels like the saying at the same but not all typical, but different all stairs. I'm going to roll right down to three. All stairs in a building undergoing construction or demo shall be lighted at all times and be kept free of equipment, debris and material. We have the section 3303.8.1 air pressurized alarm system for dry standpipe systems during construction or demo operations. For full demolitions, number one, in buildings and structures undergoing a full demolition, all existing standpipes shall be maintained in a state of readiness as a dry system in accordance with item two of section 3303.8 and shall be provided with an air pressurized alarm system. Go with, I'll read the other two, even though I don't have them highlighted. New construction alteration and partial demolition, where a dry standpipe system is utilized during new construction alteration or partial demolition operations. Such standpipe shall be provided with an air pressurized system. Three, submission of application. An application to install an air pressurized alarm system shall be filed by a registered design professional and a permit obtained by a licensed master plumber or licensed master fire suppression piping contractor. A licensed electrician shall obtain all required electrical permits in accordance with chapter three of title 27 of the administrative code. And number four specifications. The following provisions shall apply to the air pressurized alarm system sub Section 1, Pressure. Pressure shall be maintained in the standpipe and cross connections at all times and shall not exceed 25 PSIG by utilizing nitrogen or an air compressor with an air dryer. 
The supervisory pressure shall be determined by a registered design professional. Number two, automatic air pressurized alarm activation. The alarm shall be automatically activated when the trash pressure drops below the supervisory pressure or rises above the maximum pressure of 25 psig when the alarm is activated notification shall be made to the fire department in accordance with the new york city fire code all work at the site shall cease rolling down to the next highlighted unless authorized were authorized by the fire department no construction or demolition work shall resume until the standpipe system is repaired and the appropriate pressure is restored, except any repairs to the standpipe system needs to restore the required pressure shall be undertaken immediately and the standpipe system restored as soon as possible. And upon completion of repairs to the standpipe system, a full inspection of such systems shall be performed. which shall include, among other things, visually tracing the standpipe, including risers, cross connections, and fire department connections to verify that no breach exists, and checking all gauges of the standpipe system to ensure that the standpipe system is restored to a state of readiness. Section 1, subsection, notwithstanding the provisions of item 4.2, the activation of the alarm shall not require the cessation of work necessary for the completion of concrete pouring operations in progress at the time of alarm activation, where such cessation would cause a cold joint that would impair the structural integrity, integrity of the finished construction. The continuation of such operations shall be permitted only under an orderly termination of such operations can be effectuated. I've always thought that, um, Concrete's got to go no matter, and even Department of Building agrees. I scrolled down to the highlighted section four. I'm pulling up to the highlighted spot. The audible signal of the horn shall be at least 15 decibels above the ambient noise level, but no more than 110 decibels. Uh, subsection five, power supply. The standpipe alarm system shall be connected to an active, dedicated power supply at all times. Subsection 7, locks and caps. All control valves shall be chained and locked in the appropriate position and shall be provided with capped outlets. All hose valves also shall be provided with capped outlets. Fire department connections, 3-inch iron hose plugs with gaskets in fire, fire department connection swivels shall be provided subsection nine drainage provision shall be made to drain water in any trap sections of the dry standpipe system that are subject to freezing subsection 10 manual air release a minimum 2.5 inch connection Located immediately downstream of the fire department connection, check valve shall be provided and piped to a location immediately adjacent to the fire department connections. The line shall be fitted with a 2.5 inch hose valve and shall allow for the release of pressurized air from the dry system. The number of air release valves provided shall be such that the air pressure shall not be shall be released in no more than three minutes. Construction documents on subsection 11 plan shall identify all standpipe risers, cross connections, fire department connections, any intermediate check valves that have to be removed, proposed location of the air release connections, designation of the supervisory pressure, Complete information regarding the alarm system and procedures for the safe pressurization and depressurization of the system. And obviously signs shall be provided on sub subsection 12. 
and I have a highlighted section pressure gauges on subsection 3. A system of pressure gauges shall be installed at the compressor and at the most remote points of the system from the compressor. I'm going to take a break and come back to that subsection 5.